Hello, this is Zehri Lalum. Welcome you all on Frankly Speaking. My guest today is ILO County Director Mr. Srinivas Reddy. He has been County Director of ILO Bangladesh since May 2013 with a PhD in Industrial Relations and Personal Management. He has spent his 29 years of career specializing in labor administration, skills development and development cooperation. Mr. Reddy is a strong advocate of inclusive economic growth and decent work for all. We have just observed May Day, International Workers' Day or Labor Day and we are welcoming him on Frankly Speaking to talk about the mandate of ILO, ILO's programs in Bangladesh, challenges relating to labor rights and developing skills. We welcome Mr. Sinivas Reddy. Thank welcome. you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure that uh, we are observing uh, May Day. So you are here on my show. So it's my honor that uh, we are having you on this show. Uh, first of all, uh, we know that you are very passionate about job creation and uh, social justice and eliminating all forms of discrimination. So, I mean, what drives you to, 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 to pursue this career with ILO? Um, one of the main passions that have uh, contributed to this career is the ideals that ILO has been created in 1919. One of the foundational value yeah. is poverty anywhere constitutes a danger to the prosperity everywhere. Okay. This is very, very important. So, in which year you started with ILO? In the year 2000. In the year 2000. Yeah. Uh, that's great. And um, you have been working in Bangladesh since 2013. Um, and uh, you have experienced the situation in Rana Plaza and so many uh, uh, incidents relating to labor rights and activities. But um, can you very briefly tell us about the mandate of ILO relating to labor rights? Um, main mandate of ILO is the development of international labor standards. Okay. Um, ILO is the only United Nations agency which is a tripartite in its nature. Okay. Where employers, workers organizations share equal platform with the governments. So today worldwide 187 countries are members of the ILO. Mm -hmm. So all the 187 member states plus the employers and workers organizations of these countries constitute the international labor organization. Very unique organization. Very unique organization. Uh, that's a global and uh, broadly uh, you have explained the mandate. But in, we know in Bangladesh uh, you have started, uh, you have been uh, working since 1972. So, so. Yeah. so after the uh, uh, as after, after 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 passing so many years, uh, I mean, the what are the progress we have made so far uh, in relations with uh, maintaining relations with ILO and, and 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 what is the situation right now in Bangladesh? Bangladesh is a proud partner of ILO, and we are very happy to be here working with the Bangladesh government and employers and workers organizations. Okay. ILO Bangladesh operations are one of the largest in the world. Okay. Um, we have more than 100 staff members working here okay. uh, with four main priorities. Our first priority is the skills development for young people to be able to be uh, employed. Okay. So skills is the first priority and the second one is on the workplace safety, okay. particularly after Rana Plaza collapse. Okay. You know, safety at the workplace is, is one of the top priorities, followed by social dialogue, promoting Okay. relations, harmonious industrial relations between employers and workers organizations. Okay. That is our third priority. And the fourth one is promoting mm -hmm. safe labor migration, Okay. safe and skilled migration. These are our four priorities, skills, workplace safety, mm -hmm. social dialogue and labor migration. So in terms of skill development, what are the specific programs you are pursuing, you are undertaking to develop the young youth forces in Bangladesh? As uh, Bangladesh is uh, required to develop 2 million jobs every year, okay. 2 million young people are entering into labor market. So there is the need for 2 million jobs to be created and therefore it is so important. Skills development is a critical area mm -hmm. of development okay. in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is on the right track in terms mm -hmm. of bringing skills development close to the market demand. So mm -hmm. during the last 10 years, ILO in collaboration with the European Union and Canada have been working with the government of Bangladesh and employers and workers organizations to reform the skills programs in Bangladesh. So one of the main um, objective is to bridge the mismatch of supply and demand. Okay. 
So, bridging the mismatch or you know matching the current supply of young people to the market demand. So, that is the main thing you know how, how do we bring it close to the private sector and close to the industries. So, that every person going through a training mm -hmm. should either get a job or start a business. Okay. So, the purpose of the skills development is to enable people young people to become either employable or start their own business. Okay. So, our main em emphasis is to bridge the gap and, and you know make the skills programs market driven, okay. demand driven. Okay. Mr. Reddy, when you talk about labor rights uh, issues, uh, in your view, what are, the, what are the challenges, main challenges, critical challenges, central challenges? The central challenge is the mistrust between employers and workers, organizations. So, I think the need to really bring both employers and, to, and, and workers mm -hmm. uh, on a platform where they trust each other okay. and they see it as a growing together, okay. partnership and growing together. There are many misconceptions about trade unions. Employers in general have a you know, kind of negative perception. Okay. So, changing the mindset of the employers that you know, workers organizations can be a very constructive partner in, in progress. So, you know, th so that is the main, uh, you know, changing the mindset, but also enabling the workers to form their own organizations and constructively engage in dialogue. Now, what are the mechanism or instrument to bridge the gap, to, 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 to alleviate the deficit of mistrust? I think uh, the more uh, employers uh, realize that uh, instead of, let us say, a very simple example, if there is a union in a factory, uh, you have an opportunity in case of any issue that you can represent, you can call the five or you know six trade union officials and have a discussion instead of waiting to see you know maybe thousand or two thousand workers getting agitated outside of the factory gate. So very constructive, there are good, very good examples that are already emerging. Okay. Some employers do realize that it is better to have a dialogue with the workers representatives. Forging better understanding and partnership. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, ILO country director in Bangladesh. Mr. Uh, Reddy, you were talking about some of the uh, major uh, programs or focus of ILO in Bangladesh, that is skill development, um, social dialogue, uh, uh, workplace, workplace safety. safety, and another one is labor migration. Labor migration. So, in terms of um, uh, foundation of skill sector, can you please uh, let our audience to know about exactly what ILO is doing uh, with regards to developing uh, skills of the young forces? Yeah, three major things that have happened during the last decade and particularly during the last few years is the development yeah. of the national skills development policy. Uh, Bangladesh government has formulated the national skills development policy, yeah. ILO closely supported this process. Uh, and that is a very good policy which prescribes essentially yeah. that every training program has to be competency based and it has to be developed in consultation with the industry. So, one of the major results that we see today is the private sector participation in skills development through the industry skills councils. So, okay. that that, is, that, is that something that, uh, that is the requirement coming out from the private sector? Yes. They are, they are very happy that now they can participate, they can inform the training providers okay. that this is the type of job that we need okay. and if you really want your graduates to get jobs, mm -hmm. you know, you develop this type of competency. So, as they prescribe what should be the curriculum, okay. then, you know, the, also the machinery and equipment to be used. Um, so, the more uh, the private sector training, the training providers listen to the industry, and the more the jobs, you know, are likely to be employed by the industry. Taking into account the uh, current state of uh, skill development programs from ILO, uh, what is your view about the manufacturing job creation in Bangladesh? I think uh, during the seventh five-year plan, Bangladesh wants to expand the manufacturing and uh, government industry is in the forefront, you know, BGMA along with a number of other partners, mm -hmm. they have put an ambition of growing up to 50 billion dollars by 2021, yeah. uh, which means, you know, there is a possibility of creating another 1 million jobs. Okay. That is one sector, but there are also other sectors, for example, you mm -hmm. know, pharmaceuticals, thinking of even um, shipbuilding or, uh, you know, agro food processing, yeah. IT, there, there, is, there are plenty of opportunities. So, the need to really understand the market and forecast the future needs. In terms of investment, in terms of attention from the policy makers or the 
um, I mean, the goodwill of the government, how do you see that, um, I mean, amount of degree of goodwill among them to, to develop the focus you are working on, like, like skill development, workplace safety, social dialogue and um, safe migration or something like that? It is excellent. On the skills development, if you see, the National Skills Development Council is chaired by the Prime Minister. Okay. So at the level of the Prime Minister, you know, they are taking decisions which are very important and giving a leading role, leadership role for the private sector in skills development definition. It's not consultation. They need to be in the forefront. Okay. I think it is in the right direction. You know, in, in addition to ILO, a number of partners like World Bank and ADB and you know, a number of other development partners are contributing to skills development and Bangladesh government has set a target that uh, the TVET enrollment, technical and vocational education and training enrollment by 2020 should reach TVET. 20 percent. Yes, yeah. yeah. So that's a 20, if they achieve 20 percent enrollment by 2020, mm -hmm. that means they will be able to train 2 million people on vocational skills. Okay. And you know, that will enable a matching of the supply. 2 million people are every year entering into the labor market. Mm -hmm. And if these people are skilled, that is, you know, that is, that is the benefit for the individual that he or she is employed as a, as a skilled worker and that brings benefit to the families and to the uh, and and They the can society. also be sent to the, the, the uh, foreign uh, labor market. Absolutely. That's an important angle. Skills for migration, it's a whole specialization by itself. Yeah. So it, it has just started, you know, how to uh, forecast the market. Okay. For example, large number of people going to Saudi Arabia or Qatar right. or whatever. What is the market demand there? Mm -hmm. Is it construction skills? So based on the market demand, if the people are trained, both men and women, they go as skilled workers. So we need to reverse the trend. Currently, large number of Bangladesh workers are unskilled. Yes, yeah. We need to reverse the trend so that they become uh, more employable but highly, you know, uh, remunerative. Compared to the other countries, Bangladesh workers are uh, receiving lesser wages. Yeah. So a lot of emphasis on skills for migration is very important, and that's happening. Uh, you were talking about the political goodwill. Um, and you attended the May Day program uh, where Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina um, uh, um, uh, spoke. So, uh, what are the key messages uh, you have received from our speech? You know, from ILO's point of view, I think, uh, you know, as, as uh, I mentioned, one of the key possibilities and, and moving forward is the promotion of harmonious industrial relations yeah. and better understanding between employers and workers is critical. Mm -hmm. uh, in this respect, I am particularly talking about uh, freedom of association and collective bargaining, and and building a you know trust between you know uh, trust and and recognition of the fact that it has to be a prosperity that is shared okay. between employers and workers. And that so is the understanding the is growing. Rick. That is the inclusive growth. You know, Bangladesh has now subscribed for the 2030 Agenda Sustainable Development Goals. Yes, yeah. One of the particular goal I want to highlight is goal number eight. Okay. which yeah. is calling for economic growth mm -hmm. of LDCs at a minimum rate of 7%, but that economic growth should be job rich and decent work. Those are three elements of that goal eight is very important. Inclusive economic growth, mm -hmm. productive employment, and decent work. I think Bangladesh... But in terms of decent work, yeah. you also are working on the workplace safety. Yes. So uh, after Rana Plaza, uh, there has been have been a lot of uh, programs and a lot of I initiatives, um, uh, fr both from uh, home and abroad. Uh, but uh, do you think that significant um, changes have been made uh, after that incident? Yes, definitely. On workplace safety, there is significant change, significant progress in collaboration with a number of brands and retailers yeah. and global unions. Both the Accord and the Alliance and the National Initiative have done tremendous work. But the job is not yet finished. The remediation work has to be completed. Okay. So the next three years is important. Mm -hmm. We are working with government to, to institutionalize all of these lessons into okay. Bangladesh governance. Mm -hmm. Also transfer the knowledge from the Accord and Alliance mm -hmm. into the government through a single window. An industrial safety unit in the labor ministry is the one that is going to sustain all of this. Okay. So that is our focus. You know, how do we ensure that we transfer all of this knowledge have the national capacity so that they can continue to monitor the industrial safety compliance, not just in the government industry, but everywhere. Okay. Uh, Mr. Reddy, in terms of policy and law, what are the issues that ILO recommends Bangladesh government about skilled labor market for the Bangladesh government? Anticipating future needs is critical. You know, so what are the economic sectors that are going to go 
grow during the next 15 years. 2030 okay. agenda is a very good um, platform for Bangladesh to aspire for ele alleviating poverty. Okay. And, and taking that benchmark, mm -hmm. you know, anticipating the future needs and accordingly preparing the young people mm -hmm. so that Bangladesh becomes a, a, a skilled nation mm -hmm. and a competitive nation. And another thing is, um, um, we heard that um, you are also working on gender and disability inclusion uh, uh, about the skilled labor market, in the skilled labor market. So how uh, impressive is the progress about their inclusion? I think a particular focus need to be paid for uh, women uh, enrollment in the TVET, techni okay. technical and vocational education and training. Mm -hmm. If you look at public sector, for example, public sector institutions, the last... In how many areas the TVET program is undergoing? Number so of sectors, okay. number of sectors and areas, but the last thing I remember was 13 percent was the enrollment rate for women okay. in the TVET. Oh. Yes. So, so that's mandatory. Yeah. No, 13 percent was the, you know, if you be compare between men and women. Oh, okay. So that need to grow. You know, okay. Women need to have more op opportunities. So okay. particular attention need to be paid to um, encourage young women to take up vocational training programs in non-traditional occupations mm -hmm. and break the gender stereotypes. There are many good examples that are happening already. Mm -hmm. Women these days, uh, you know, can take up any vocation. So we have to break those stereotypes. Also providing opportunities for persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, Bangladesh government, uh, you know, with the support of ILO, developed two national strategies on how to promote opportunities for women and also the persons with disabilities in TVET so that their enrollment rate will, will go up. Mm -hmm. uh, specific measures and in incentives are proposed in that strategy. Uh, I mean, disabled people are also uh, included in the TVET program? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so a number of uh, companies are employing disabled people. Uh, how many com how many of them are? A large number of, uh, you know, last time I have seen uh, through the through the Center for Paralyzed and CRP, uh, yeah. um, a large number of uh, RMG factories are willing to employ trained oh, okay. PWDs. Okay. So, um, uh, the number of vocational institutes, I mean, um, we had this the government um, uh, setting up new vocational institutes uh, uh, to, to, to meet the demand of the skilled workforce in the labor market. So, I mean, uh, is there any uh, investment, I mean, significant investment you see in constructing or building new institutions? It's happening. It's happening uh, to both for the development of new TTCs mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and also through other private sector and NGO sector also, particularly the two large investments Bangladesh has accepted mm -hmm. from the World Bank and ADB, yeah. um, those, uh, those projects should be used mm -hmm. in a way that services the market need, mm -hmm. so that the people who after the training okay. should be immediately employable. So okay. it's a good thing that is happening with these projects is that they measure the success mm -hmm. by the employment rate, okay. which is good. The, the relations, the partnership between companies and the particular training providers, how do you look at this? Um, there are uh, 11 centers of, ex 11 uh, industry skills councils today. Mm -hmm. Some are very active and some need more support. Mm -hmm. For example, what comes to our mind immediately when you say, you know, whether the industry mm -hmm. participation is adequately enough, mm -hmm. I, you know, easily it comes to our mind leather and leather goods, okay. industry skills council clearly emerged as a, as a leader. Mm -hmm. Now the uh, Industry Skills Council for the government sector mm -hmm. is picking up. Mm -hmm. Similarly, all the sectors, Industry Skills Councils need to be really activated and, and uh, that will benefit both the industry but also the job seekers. Yeah, and, and that's an important area which we are working on. Well, at the very beginning, I, I, I mentioned that we have just observed the May Day. Um, in terms of wages, um, still uh, there has been remarkable discrimination in many areas. What's your view about that? I mean, the uh, scaling up the wages and meeting or alleviating the sufferings or the um, uh, I mean, the unmet demands of the uh, s some labor class in society. Yeah, minimum wages is an important instrument when the collective bargaining has not matured. Mm. So, in Bangladesh context, it is very, very important that minimum wage intervention is is uh, applied mm -hmm. uh, systematically to uh, you know mm -hmm. different sectors of economy. Um, so, the minimum wages formula, you know, ILO suggests is that it is based on the national context and it is best determined by the government in, con in, in, in active consultation with the employers and workers organizations. So, you know, we strongly recommend that these three parties, government, employers and workers organizations actively involve in consultation and arrive at a minimum wage. 
but um, we have laws, we have uh, 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 so far conducive environment to protect our, um, to, 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 to uh, protect the rights of the labor. But I mean, uh, in your view, uh, do they uh, uh, get uh, due kind of protection in terms of uh, realizing their demands or their rights? Um, in some of the industrial sectors, the union penetration rate is still very low. Okay. Um, therefore, the bargaining capacity is still not there. For example, you know, the bargaining in, in many cases happens to even um, negotiate mm -hmm. for certain statutory entitlements. Okay. So, if you look at the collective bargaining agreements entered at the factory level are very, very few. And at the sectoral level also, there are not many. So, you know, that, that is why there is a need for um, you know, continue dialogue and, and, and providing opportunities for the workers and their representatives to be able to dialogue. Um, for example, in the government sector, now we are okay. happy to see that the even the industry is saying that they would like to have a sectoral union mm. negotiating with mm. the BGMA. Yeah. You know, ideal scenario is okay. um, sectoral unions of the government industry and BGMA, BKM, if they can negotiate, what are the terms and conditions? Yeah then that is, you know, that will lay a very good platform for actually, uh, you know, distributing the prosperity. Okay. We are almost uh, to end our program. Um, um, on the eve of May Day, what are the messages you want to extend uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the improvement of the labor rights situation in Bangladesh? I would like to extend warm greetings to all the viewers on the occasion of this uh, auspicious May Day. Um, I think uh, Bangladesh is in the right direction in terms of promoting opportunities for inclusive economic growth, decent work and productive employment. The more employers and workers organizations in collaboration with the government dialogue and, and you know respect each other, mutual respect and, and uh, appreciation, mm -hmm. I think it will be better for all parties. There are so many objectives you have already set out, but uh, in the coming days, in the coming days, um, you have already been past three years in your uh, working tenure. So, what are the major objectives you set out for to achieve in the coming days during your tenure in Bangladesh? During my tenure, you know, harmonious industrial relations and promoting opportunities for the workers and their organizations to realize basic rights like freedom of association and collective bargaining are fundamental and critical. In addition, the skills development is also very important for Bangladesh. To realize the demographic dividend of Absolutely. Bangladesh. Thank you so much, Mr. Sinibar. Thank Fred, you very much. Yeah, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, dear viewer, we thank you indeed for watching Frankly Speaking. And we invite you to watch our next episode. Until then, to take care and goodbye. <laughs>